Hello everybody, This welcome, this is Gretchen Heidel and I am live tonight on Facebook and on Instagram and also I will be posting this to my Facebook page, my Instagram page and my YouTube if you're going to watch that, the pre-recorded uh, version of this. So welcome everybody who is joining me now live, welcome, welcome and go ahead and post your astrological sign below. Um, I love hearing... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if that's um, saying it properly on Instagram I already posted Capricorn welcome um, so I'm loving hearing everybody uh, coming on live tonight welcome welcome it's our Monday night date um, so we have a lot to go over tonight. I'm going to be talking about this week in astrology it's going to be starting uh, today Monday on March 8th 2021 all the way until uh, next Sunday night on March 14th, 2021. So welcome everybody. Corbin on Facebook said he is st still Scorpio, welcome. So if you're just joining me live, please go ahead, post your astrological sign. Also, I love to hear where you're viewing from if you're viewing uh, somewhere around the world. Love to hear that. Um, Pete, oh, okay, Pete. Hi, welcome Pete, um, KKT Sagittarius, welcome on Instagram. Colette Hay <laughs> and Astro Friends, welcome. I love that she said that. Everybody's uh, friends here tonight. We're, we're all friends and we're all going to be chatting tonight a lot about Pisces. Oh my goodness, Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Kate's a Pisces. Uh, she said loves that top. Thank you. Uh, thank you from Kate. Uh, Corbin, uh, Moon and Sagittarius, Virgo rising. We did find out uh, that. Uh, Pete, uh, viewing from Newport. Um, Wales, Wales, but born in India. Oh, cool! Welcome. I love hearing. I love hearing uh, where everybody's viewing from. My my mom, Virgo, Colorado. Welcome, mom. Uh, my mom still is suffering from a concussion, so if everybody can send her uh, some good love and healing vibes. So we're going to talk a lot about Pisces uh, because Pisces energy is very active this week. I'm going to go over all of all the the different days and what days you need to know about. Okay, because it's important. I always say when you know about the energy, you can go with the flow and that way it's not shocking. You don't need to feel like you're crazy, all of that stuff. I mean, sometimes these big astrological energies happen and then we feel like, like, what is happening? Is it just me? No, it's collective. It's the collective vibe. Now, everybody experiences the collective vibe a little bit different, obviously, because the collective is the collective. But if you're sensitive in HSP, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, highly sensitive person, an empath, an intuitive, a light worker, you, you know, of course, you'll be feeling this energy, uh, you know, really a lot. So welcome, welcome. Jane Moon Wolf said, oh, no, goodness. Love and healing to Rita. Yeah, please love and healing to my mom, Rita. Um, Pete asks where I'm from. I am broadcasting live from Vermont in the USA. Uh, Jocelyn Libra in Vermont. Welcome, Marianne. Lots of love to Rita. Um, Lauren said Virgo party. Yep, my mom's a Virgo too. Jackie, yes. Hi, Jackie. Aquarius sun. Um, Scorpio rising in Fairfax, Vermont. <laughs> Corbin said the topic sounds fishy to me. I love that. That's a great segue uh, because we're going to talk a lot about Pisces. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, first of all, this week astrologically is a little quieter, okay, than a lot of the weeks that we've had. Next week I'm not going to be saying that. So just relish in the quietness. It's very interesting because when when the astrological skies are quiet. People like go, nothing's going on. My life is stalled. It's never going to happen. I'm stuck. I feel bored. You know, people have this reaction to the quiet times in astrology. Um, so it's very interesting. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, I guess us humans, it's like either like we always have to be doing something. And so I guess, uh, but I always say real peace peace inside of us is like in a space of neutrality or in the middle or, you know, kind of beige, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a beige week in a way, as much as Pisces can be beige because Pisces sometimes is not. Um, so really the action begins on Wednesday. Okay. On March 10th, 2021, uh, this Wednesday, the moon will be in uh, Aquarius at that point. Uh, but on that day, is when the sun in Pisces forms a conjunction 
with Pisces ruler, which is Neptune, okay? And Neptune's in Pisces, so it's going to be the sun's in Pisces, Neptune's in Pisces, and they're coming together, okay? On the peak of it is going to be on Wednesday the 10th. Thank you for people sh uh, liking and sharing and doing the hearts. I love all that. That's, that's so much fun. And tag people that you know um, that can watch this. That way they'll know. Oh, Melinda. Yay. So Melinda just posted that uh, her daughter had her baby. So Melinda's grandbaby, just like I said, on March 5th, um, <laughs> I nailed the day and the time. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Well, that happens sometimes. Uh, so yay. Welcome to Melinda. She's a, she's a grandmom and uh, she had her baby and uh, yay. So I'm glad. Hopefully everybody's happy and healthy and wonderful. Uh, give our love to Molly. Um, you know, so you have a new Pisces baby and that baby uh, was, uh, does have a Sagittarius moon. Um, and I believe Molly is a Sagittarius, her mom. So that'll, that'll be, that'll be interesting. Um, Sagittarius, uh, that sun moon connection with a, a baby and their, and their mommy. So welcome everybody who's joining and we still got people coming on, on face on uh, Instagram. So anyway, so, um, we have the conjunction coming on Wednesday and boy, we're going to be feeling it. Melinda said, baby Veronica. Oh, so congratulations, Melinda. If everybody on Facebook uh, is uh, saying congratulations on your new grandbaby. So um, yeah, so Sun conjunct Neptune coming on Wednesday. It's a big thing. And uh, basically the ruler of Pisces is Neptune. Neptune in Greek mythology was Poseidon. And then in Roman mythology, it's Neptune. So it's the dude with the trident, okay, who is like in charge of the ocean. And so this is all water sign, okay? Pisces is a water sign. Pisces is also the last uh, sign of the zodiac. So it's the 12th sign, it's the last sign. And then that's when we go into, it's the end of winter. And then we go into spring during the spring equinox, which is coming up. But we still have two more weeks in Pisces season. And that's why we have a lot of Piscean energy, but just this week, it's all about Pisces right now. So it actually technically even started yesterday because Pallas Athena, which I posted about on my astrology updates page and also on Instagram, Pallas Athena, which is an asteroid, uh, she went into Pisces and she's going to be in Pisces all year now. Pallas Athena is very important because she's the strategy. So I, I titled that post, What's Your Strategy? What's Your Life Strategy? So we've had last year, she was in, I believe, just two signs. She was in Capricorn and Aquarius last year in 2020. So Capricorn, you know, she was in Capricorn most of the year, which was all like that stuff with Saturn and Pluto and, ugh, you know, government and politics and all that that crazy stuff we were feeling last year. This year, now, she's going to spend the whole year in Pisces. And then, like I said, we have the Sun and, and Neptune coming together on Wednesday. So what to expect during that time? So if you are a Pisces or if you're one of the other water signs, so Cancer or Scorpio, uh, Corbin, okay, <laughs> any, any Cancers or Scorpios out there, you will be feeling this Piscean energy because it's going to enhance your water, okay, the internal water. And what is water element? Well, water is all about emotion. So... We might be feeling really emotional this week, and that's going to be a lot about what I'm talking about is emotions. Um, or if you are one of the earth signs, you might do pretty well with this because um, uh, earth needs water. Otherwise, it's a de desert, so nothing can grow. Uh, so earth needs water. So if you're um, one of the earth signs, so if you're a Taurus or a Virgo or a Capricorn, uh, you might do pretty well with this Piscean energy, just saying. But if you're if you're a fire sign, we're getting the worst of it because the fire signs are going to go, wah, wah. I mean, fire water puts out fire or fire can evaporate water. So, so we might not feel, <laughs> you know, might, might not feel so great if you're, if you're a fire sign. And even if you're an air sign, air, air and uh, water have to try harder to get along because that's like a hurricane. 
if they go out of balance. Uh, Glenn said he's a uh, an Aquarius, the sea of emotions this week. That is right, Glenn. There, there is going to be a, the sea of emotions. Thank you so much for whoever's liking, liking, liking. I love this. Amy, laugh out loud. Yeah. So, I mean, for sure, we're going to be feeling a lot of this energy. So, um, here's the thing, though. So, so we're going to have two conjunctions with Neptune this week. So the sun is going to form a conjunction on Wednesday. And the height of that is going to be 7.01 p.m. Eastern time. So 4.01 p.m. Uh, uh, on West Coast uh, Pacific uh, Standard Time. Um, so you're going to be feeling that peak, the height on Wednesday. We'll feel it probably tomorrow. We're going to feel it all day on Wednesday. But then also on Saturday, so Saturday is going to be the new moon in Pisces. We have a lot of Pisces in there. I'm going to keep saying Pisces and Pisces. It might, we could turn it into like a little bit of a, a drinking game. <laughs> Not that I do that anymore. We could do wheat shot, wheat grass shots. Um, every time I say Pisces, um, so the new moon in Pisces is going to take place on Saturday, and that's going to be on the 13th, okay, and that's going to be in Pisces. But then on the same day as the new moon in Pisces, Venus is going to form a conjunction with Pisces. So Venus is in Pisces now too, and it's going to form a conjunction with Pisces. So the the this will be very stressful, like I said, for the fire signs, but also if you are Virgo, even though I just said Virgo um, is one of the earth signs, Virgo is the opposite of Pisces. So Virgos sometimes are challenged a little bit under this Piscean, all this Piscean stuff because Virgos, uh, you know, Virgo likes order and structure. It's almost like Oscar and Felix, that old um, TV show. Um, Virgo likes structure and order and like come up with a plan and have a strategy and Pisces is like let's sleep late and eat a bunch of potato chips like why do we have to have a structure why do we have to have a plan can't we just drift and dream and imagine and that's very Piscean a lot of people on Pisces weeks I'm just saying out loud they tend to run late they tend to be sleepy or tired or feel a little like I can't concentrate and I feel like a little cloudy or foggy or fuzzy. Um, that's very Piscean. Okay. So just to let you guys know to expect this whole week. So like I said, the 10th and Saturday, uh, the 13th are going to be the two big hot spots of Pisces energy, but it's going to be active all week because the moon moves into Pisces on Thursday, the 11th at 9 44 AM and continues through all the way until almost seven o'clock PM on Saturday after the new moon. So, so from the 10th, let's see, 10th, 11th, or I'm sorry, 11th, 12th, and then 13th, the moon is going to be in Pisces those three days, 11th, 12th, and 13th this week. So it's just Pisces rules this week. So I wanted to talk about Pisces a lot because, and we're in Pisces season and Pallas Athena is in Pisces and Venus is in Pisces and everything's in Pisces. So, um, I shouldn't say everything, but a lot of planets are in Pisces. So, so what does that mean? And basically, when we think about Pisces, my moon is in Pisces, okay? Um, so I can, I feel like I can describe describe this well because I'm a cusp baby. By the way, if you're a cusp baby, um, a lot of people uh, cusp cuspers, um, which a lot of astrologers hate when we say cuspers because they say there's no such thing but there really is I feel because I'm a cusp baby and I can feel but I have the sun in Aries and then the moon in Pisces um, because usually cusp people people who are born right at the very cutoff or the edge of of the when it switches basically we like to hang out with other cuspers we're a little more complicated okay because we usually have both signs in us um, and so that usually mostly is true like 95% of the charts that I've done people who are born on the cusp tend to have both both signs so that's usually why it's called cusp uh, because the person said to have both. Uh, and so if you are basically uh, born on the end of uh, beginning of Aries, you might have a lot of Pisces in your chart. Um, if your birthday is like the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, even 24th like myself, Marianne said she's a Pisces moon too, right? She's an Aries with a Pisces moon. So that can happen sometimes, but us cusp babies do tend to um, be a little more, we're going to say complicated. <laughs> And often if you're like, if you're, if you're born in the middle, like let's say of your sign, 
you'll tend to be friends with other people who are born kind of in the middle of their sign. If you're born on the cusp, you'll tend to be friends with people who are born on the cusp. Um, it's pretty interesting how that happens. Uh, so anyway, that that's kind of like a fun thing. You could take an informal poll of your friends and family members that you get along best with. So what if you don't know where Pisces is in your chart? You have to know where Pisces is in your chart to know how this will affect you on a personal level, meaning what house is Pisces inhabiting in your chart and if you guys know please post below I'd love to hear um, and I can kind of give you a little bit of a loose interpretation of what that would um, mean for you or what impact uh, that has on you um, but Pisces uh, does tend to be drifty dreamy imagine okay um, and it's 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 associated with the house in the in the area of the chart if you look at your chart it's associated with the house that's the 12th house. So the 12th house is the house of mysticism. It's the house uh, connect, that we call it God consciousness or Christ consciousness or higher power or um, crown chakra, okay, or the universe or Buddha, Allah, Krishna, whoever it is you pray to. In other words, it's it's kind of knowing or feeling that there's like this otherworldly kind of like sense that's Pisces. Okay. So, um, now on the downside, this can increase, I'm just going to say out loud, this can increase drug and alcohol use, the predisposition towards, um, avoidance or escapism or, you know, um, any kind of thing like that. Like a lot of, you know, people with a lot of Pisces in their chart, just like avoid, you know, like they don't want to do drama, trauma. They don't want to do any of that. So they just kind of boop, disappear. That's very common with Pisces. I have a lot of Pisces friends that do that and it's just a thing. And I'm like, Oh yeah, they're in their Pisces mode. <laughs> But obviously in a healthy, healthy expression of all this Piscean energy is to say, hey, I need a little time. I call it empathic rest or intuitive rest. You need a little time to like gather up all of your, you know, sort of internal thing. Pisces do like to be alone a lot, by the way. If you guys have know anybody who is a Pisces, a lot of Pisces like to be alone. So uh, Brother Light, hello, welcome. Um, he said Pisces is in his fifth house. So his fifth, fifth house is uh, children, but it's also where you go to play. So it's like entertainment and music and all that. So the cool thing, I have something to talk about in reference to that. So I'll get back to that, Brother Light. Um, but basically, it's one of those things where um, uh, every single astrological sign has an archangel that is associated with that astrological sign. And Pisces is Archangel Sandalfin. Okay, so Sandalfin uh, was the archangel that was said to have God's ear, you know, to be like closest. He was called the brother, actually, just to let you know, and, uh, dear brother uh, on Instagram here <laughs> has Pisces in his chart, I believe, if I remember correctly. But you have Pisces in your chart. So uh, somebody else said they have Pisces uh, um you have Virgo sixth house. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. So Virgo, that means you must have Aries rising, right? Fairy still says Sagittarius Virgo moon, Pisces rising. So you'll feel this, especially if anybody knows their sun sign, moon sign, whatever. If you have any of those in water, you're going to feel this Pisces energy. Corbin said Pisces in the sixth house. That will give you, Corbin, that's an interesting Pisces because that will give you like a sixth sense of medical issues in your personal, in your body, okay? The other thing you have to kind of watch for, Corbin, because Pisces, when we talk about the body, Pisces is associated with the feet, okay? And the lymphatic system. So think about fluids, like excess fluid, like, hello, God of the water and the ocean and all that, right? So if you think of fluid in the body um, and the lymphatic system, that's Pisces, okay? So swelling and lymphedema and like any kind of thing, um, Corbin swollen ankles or whatever can be a Piscean thing um, or problems literally with your feet. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, my brother actually has Pisces in his sixth house and he's had a bunch of broken, he's had broken feet and also surgery on his feet. So it's, it's an interesting thing. So if you have a lot of, um, a lot of Pisces in your chart, 
uh, that, that that can be a problem in the body. But it's any time where you get um, too much fluid. So it can be uh, weight gain and like with water, like too much water. So if you're prone to, um, like if your kidneys are not working properly to filter your water out. Uh, the ladies, okay, can have problems with uh, enlarged breasts uh, as far as um, having too much water, PMS, or some kind of thing like that. Um, that can be a Pisces thing. Um, so yeah, so Lauren said she had fifth house in Pisces. So fifth house is where you go to play, and and Pisces is your play. So think mysticism, think um, think tarot cards, uh, you know, or uh, doing fun stuff like that. Pisces, Sandalfin, okay, in as far as the Archangel, he is said to be the musical director for heaven. I love that. I love that. A lot of Pisces are very highly creative. A lot of Pisces um, feel music viscerally. So we want to connect this week to music, to song, to poetry, to, to any kind of thing. Um, oh, that's right. My mom's saying uh, my nephew also has feet issues as well and he has to wear form special forms in his shoes when I was little I had feet I had foot problems as well um, I do have flat feet um, but I also had some other things with my feet and yeah that that was a that was a problem and I have a Pisces moon okay so just to let you know that is a thing uh, Lauren said <laughs> yes, uh, you do tarot card and oracle card readings, right, and channeling. That's right, yeah, and you feel music viscerally as well, right. Um, that's all that really good stuff. So Terry, hey Terry, welcome on Instagram. Um, Scorpio, yes, Virgo rising, Pluto is in the 12th house. So where is your Pisces, if you know? Um, <laughs> Brother Light said he sometimes has some problems with his fins. Instead of his feet, he said fins, get it, ha ha. Um, no worry. Okay, so she's not, okay, um, uh, I'm not sure the Celise uh, on Instagram said she misread the chart, so she's going to look that up. Uh, Corbin said, yeah, he's going to keep an eye on that. You'd rather have your Pisces in the playhouse, right? Uh, Kelly said Pisces in the 10th, and I did talk about that a couple weeks ago, but I want to, um, and Jane Moon Wolf said Pisces IC, uh, which is close to the fourth house. Uh, so 10th house Pisces uh, tends to be um, drifting, dreaming, imagining, right, playing. But when you look at the 10th house or the MC, okay, in your chart, that's a very, very top. That's like the crown chakra area of the chart. Um, that's where we go to, like, express ourselves as far as our work. Uh, what are we going to do, like, you know, to give back to humanity and, and what difference are we going to make and how are we going to make, you know, our money, obviously. But 10th house tends to be, um, so Kelly said Pisces. Hi, hi, Kelly. I miss you. Uh, 10th house Pisces is work. So sometimes when when you are got the Pisces thing going on up there at the 10th, um, yeah, it can absolutely be work doing something like this, okay? Sometimes Pisces, I'm also, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm also a non-denominational ordained minister. So um, I marry people, okay? And so that's my mystical side coming out. I'm not necessarily into like organized religion, but I am very spiritual and mystical. I talk to my angels, I talk to my spirit guides, and this is all Pisces realm. I mean, this is the deal. Now, Pisces is also the chameleon. Pisces is said to embody, embody a little bit of each and every one of the signs. So it's complicated because I always say if you are actually if you are like a Pisces sun, really look and see what is your rising sign, what's your moon sign, because Pisces is the chameleon. It has a little bit of each one of the um, signs in it, and it is set. It it is a real. Um, thing where I've met Pisces that are very Virgo-like because they had Virgo rising or they were very, you know, Leo-like because they had a Leo combination there. So it's very interesting. Pisces is one of the harder ones to sort of guess because Pisces tends to just meld and, and kind of blend in. And so that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, it's also one of the more complicated signs uh, because again, it does embody all of them. But when we think about the last sign of the Zodiac, we're thinking about God consciousness, Christ consciousness, and all that. Now, I know Pisces who are nowhere near that. I know Pisces who are more 
we'll say atheist and we'll say very regimented and very like work oriented and all those types of things and I, I happen to know a lot of Pisces like that but usually like I said it's because they have a lot of other planets in other areas of their chart and that kind of really influences things um there's a lot of very talented people that were Pisces you know Michelangelo was a Pisces uh double Pisces yeah Pisces sun and Pisces moon the musical classical composer Maurice Ravel was a double Pisces, Pisces Sun, Pisces Moon. Um, Albert Einstein is a Pisces. I mean, there's a lot of like really talented people who are Pisces, but they tend to really just um, vary a lot with different things. So Archangel Sandalphon uh, was the archangel to, that was said to have God's ear. Like he was said to be able to communicate the most with with God and and have like when we talk about that crown uh, chakra connection with God we're talking about being able to get get uh, messages from our spirit from God spirit guides angels whatever you want to call them okay uh, that we're able to channel those messages through either nature because Archangel Sandalphon was also um, very is very closely aligned with earth and and nature and also music. So uh, a lot of times we'll get signs and, and uh, whatever from spirit or from our spirit guides or angels. We'll get messages this week. So this is going to turn up. If you have anything in your chart that's empathic, intuitive, HSPs, highly sensitive persons, any of that kind of stuff in your chart, if you're a sensitive person to, to um, like, you know, uh, energy, you're going to feel this. This energy is going to be strong. So Margaret Larson said uh, that you have Pisces in your second house. So Pisces is how you make your money. And so Pisces, you know, any of that type of stuff is is that Pisces uh, kind of area. Uh, Kelly said, you know, uh, hers was 10th house. 10th house is what you want to be when you grow up, where second house is how you make your money. Now, Hmm. Pisces are very interesting. They're very good. A lot of Pisces I know are very good with numbers. Hello, Albert Einstein, right? But not great with their finances. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> a lot of Pisces have trouble with money uh, because it's kind of like, and it's ironic because the ruler of Pisces, which is Neptune, is said to be ruling over the stock market. So I always know when there's a lot of Piscean energy or, or or Neptunian energy, there's going to be highs and lows with the stock market, just letting you guys know. And if you think about the ocean, right, and you think about energy and waves and all that, I mean, that's really stock market-esque. It's very up and down. And the nickname of Neptune is Nebulous Neptune. Like, we can't feel it, hear it, see it, touch it, smell it, but we know it's there, right? It's, it's nebulous, right? It's like we're not sure what it is. Well, the stock market's kind of the same way. And really, money is the same way, Margaret. I'm answering your question about Pisces being in the second house. Money's the same way, right? Like, can't we just print it, like, on a 3D printer? Like, <laughs> all right, cancel clear. Well, no, no, we don't need the government coming in on this uh, YouTube <laughs> video but I mean like that's that's a lot of Pisces feel that way about money it's like why can't we just print more why do I have to worry about money can I knit a hat in exchange for kilowatts like why do I have to even worry about this um Pisces tends to be that way um we you know Pisces is kind of a funny sign where they're very good with numbers but not yet not super great at, at money because it's like this like concept that what is money? Like a lot of us don't even know what money is. It's like this weird figure that's in a online digital app, you know, and it's like, what does that even mean? I have X, Y, Z amount in this account, but I, you know, we don't have stacks of pure paper money anymore. Not really in the same way. And now we get into cryptocurrency and oh my God, you know, it's the concept of money is very um, nebulous when we, especially when we're talking about especially when we're talking about uh, Pisces. Brother Light said, definitely not into organized religion, but into the universe and Mother Nature, of course. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's so funny. Terry said, uh, any chance you can help me find yours? I could look at your chart, uh, but I'd have to look. I, should, I was thinking about, um, usually it is, um, so for those of you who have your chart, Actually, I have a chart here. Oh, I have the chart of Joe Biden. The, only Gretchen has a chart of Joe Biden just laying around. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. So Joe Biden. All right. So where Joe Biden's Pisces is, and I'm going to show you guys so that you can, like, if you have a copy of your chart, you can see where it is, what is the symbol. So each of the... Astrology is a study of like, I mean, these are all symbols, right, on the astrological chart. So this is the symbol of Pisces, okay, just so that you guys can see here. It's in between Aries, which is the horn, the ram, okay, that's the Aries symbol. And then the symbol for Aquarius, okay, which is the waves, okay. In between is Pisces, the two fish, if you think of the two fish, right, that's Pisces. So he has, uh, somebody else had this, but he has Pisces on his IC fourth house of home and family somebody else had that i'm looking back here good evening rosie welcome from burlington vermont uh somebody else had a fourth house pisces i was just trying to look i can't remember oh j moon wolf does okay yeah pisces pisces in the fourth house so you can see this is his fourth house. So he has a little bit of Pisces on his fourth house, Joe Biden, and then he's got a lot of Aries on his fourth house. So what does that mean? Jane Moon Wolf, you always have to watch flooding and pipes, okay, in the fourth house of home and family. When you have the god of the ocean ruling over your area of real estate, you could have leaky roofs, you could have uh, dripping faucets. You could have leaky pipes. Okay, so you always want to make sure. And and if you buy, ever buy a house, Jane Moon Wolf, um, yes, you might want to live close to water, overlooking an ocean, overlooking Lake Champlain, any kind of thing like that where you're on uh, near water or on water. But here is the thing. Um, you want to watch because you can have leaky basement, all that kind of stuff because Pisces is the ocean, right? Pisces is water. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on. And you want to make sure that your wells, okay, like on your property, if you have a well or a septic system, something like that, um, uh, you want to make sure that your well has potable water in it, okay? Because that can be a problem with Pisces. You want to make sure your your water is good, Um so yeah, so that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, she said, Jane Moon said, oh my God, that's so true. I thought I was being haunted by a water witch. <laughs> no, no, just Pisces. It's <laughs> just Pisces. Almost every apartment, it was literally raining from the ceiling. Oh my gosh, that's right. Yeah, so, so it's very interesting. So remember, our chart is literally our life. I mean, it's not like people think it's like something different. Like this, I call the chart, this is Joe Biden's chart, by the way, if you're just joining, um, I call the chart, the blueprint of the soul, right? So I wonder if the white house is going to be like raining from the ceiling with Joe Biden living in it. But, um, but yeah, so that's the thing of this is that it literally can tell you what your house is going to look like, what your relative, who your relatives are. It's, it's crazy fascinating. I think astrology is so cool. Um, <laughs> yep. So anyway, so Archangel Sandalfin, um, I, I'm going to show you the three cards that I pulled here from Doreen Virtue's deck. And unfortunately this deck is out of print. Um, I think it's like $200 now on Amazon. It's crazy, but, um, because it's out of print, but, um, her card here re representing Archangel Sandalfun, okay, is, is the card of gentleness. And you can see he's got a, he's got a guitar or a mandolin or something in his hand. Um, uh, be very gentle with yourself at this time. Surround yourself with gentle people, situations, and environments. That's because Pisces and Archangel Sandalfun, um, it's about being attuned for that very fine, mystical, like, I always say sometimes, um, sometimes like the message we, messages we get from spirit guides are more of a whisper. It's not like screaming in our ear unless if we're about to do something really, you know, bad and then the, then the angels will reel us back in a harsher way. But sometimes, um, messages from spirit or messages from, from, uh, our, our angels can be, uh, like whispers. So the key is, is to be open and to really, um, listen to yourself and to others. Uh, the other, the other, um, card representing Archangel Sandalfun in this deck is gifts from God, right? So I was just saying, um, about music and painting and, 
uh, tarot cards and any kind of thing where we're, we are very creative and we're, we're playing or acting or singing or dancing or doing all kinds of stuff. This is a great time to dance in your living room, by the way. Do chanting, you know, any kind of thing like that. Um, Archangel Sandalfin, okay? We angels bring you gifts from your creator. Open your arms to receive. Um, also, uh, for whoever had um, uh, the 10th house and also the second house, Pisces, when you're looking at Pisces career options, anything where you're helping other people, where you're um, uh, helping to save people, animals, situation, a lot of Pisces are bartenders. I'm just going to say that because think liquid, okay? They're pouring liquid. Um, so a lot of Pisces are bartenders or servers. Uh, a lot of uh, Pisces people tend, uh, sometimes tend to be uh, teachers um, or just anybody who's giving back. A lot of counselors, a lot of counselors uh, are Pisces and or readers, you know, like myself are Pisces. Um, so that's something that uh, you might want to keep in mind when you're thinking of Pisces. And then victory, the card of victory. I love this card. It's beautiful. The colors in it are so beautiful. But that's Archangel Sandalfin. Your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith. So remember, um, Archangel Sandalfin really had, you know, was said to have a direct um, sort of thing with God, you know, like be able to give messages directly. Um, and it also is said that Archangel Sandalfin um, works really well with Archangel Metatron. So um, those two are BFFs, I guess. <laughs> Now, I wanted to go over uh, good stones for Pisces. Um, of course, we are in March, and the birthstone of March, I'm not wearing them tonight, um, but I am. <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, Veselise. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right. Uh, she just said, I'm loving this. I wish I knew which area Pisces was in. I think I, I showed you in the chart. If you have your chart, that's the symbol you're looking for, and then you want to look at the house, what house. So that's the symbol you are looking for in your chart if you wanted to know where Pisces is. Okay, so, and by the way, you can always order a chart from me, just the chart, no reading. It's it's just the printout, and it's $39.99 if you ever want to get a chart, but you have to let me know. Um, but here is the birthstone of March. It is aquamarine. So it looks less blue on Instagram for some reason, but on, on Facebook it looks blue. And that's a light blue color. And Pisces is associated with grief, unfortunately. Um, feeling sad, feeling sorrow, feeling, um, feeling. We'll just say feeling, period. Um... Pisces tends to be kind of a little depressing, sometimes a little depressive, uh, sad, gloomy. Um, a lot of times Pisces, uh, you know, that time is associated with grieving. So um, I want to let you know that aquamarine is great if you are grieving over anything, if you're sad over anything. There was a lot of loss in this last couple of years uh, due to COVID and other, I just know a lot of people that passed away. My pet rabbit died. I mean... I had a lot of loss and, and a lot of grief. So basically, that's what the deal is, is um, this is aquamarine is really good if you're a Pisces. The other the other stone which is good for Pisces is moonstone. So uh, my moonstone is a little light. It's hard to kind of see. It looks maybe whitish, but it, this one's like a grayish one. Um, this is some moonstone, if you can see that. And that can be very good for Pisces and also good for female in general. So if you have problems like female issues, um, anything pertaining to female fertility, I, um, uh, PMS or menopause or whatever, painful things, uh, that can be really good for Pisces. And the moon and moonstone, it was said in the olden days, was actually called the traveler stone. Though I wouldn't recommend traveling with Moonstone. I feel like I feel like Moonstone is like good if you want to be more sensitive and you want to be more intuitive and you want to be more open. That's good for Moonstone. I wouldn't go shopping, let's say, or around a big party with people. A, it's COVID right now anyway, but B, I wouldn't go like to a party wearing Moonstone because that would make me too open and I'm always like working on closing like, you know, not being so open and sensitive. Um, so 
if you are trying to be a little bit more closed, you know what I'm always going to say, but the grounding stones, and I love using this. I've been using this lately a lot, um, uh, which is tiger iron, and this is very grounding. But any of the darker colored stones, okay, hematite, onyx, jet, all those stones tend to be much more grounding. Um, <laughs> Yes, Lauren said, Moonstones, good luck. Put one in your luggage and you'll never lose it. Yes, yes, I would say that would be good. No, I wouldn't wear it on myself just because I'm too open anyway. Like, I can feel people without even trying. So I have to close more when I'm traveling. But Lauren did a good point. You could put Moonstone in your car. You could put Moonstone in your luggage. Um, and that might be really good. Um, Edith said she loves the Onyx. Uh, yes, Onyx is great. Onyx, though, has to be cleansed and cleared uh, a little bit more uh, frequently. Uh, I don't know if this one, I think this one is Onyx. Yes, uh, this one's the Onyx that I have, um, but it's it has to be cleansed and cleared, and I have Onyx on my ring here, um, if you can see. So, basically, those are really good stones. So, if you're, whenever you're looking for grounding, Archangel Sandalfin is connected with the earth chakra so so it's almost like heaven and earth um uh is archangel sandalfin so if you want to connect down um earth science by the way is another piscean thing oil uh is you know think about drilling in the ocean for oil right that's very piscean um and so uh a lot of people earthy people tend to be i worked in veterinary medicine for 14 years um i got my pisces moon so uh, that's all good stuff for pisces so so speaking of that, so Wednesday, the sun is going to be conjunct Neptune and Pisces. And then on Saturday, Venus is going to be conjunct Neptune and Pisces. That the downside of this Pisces stuff, which I love Pisces, but the downside is going to be like lack of clarity. We're going to be too like in love with love. Gosh, please watch this around relationships because this can be real rose-colored glasses, you know, like, oh my God, like Chanel rose-colored glasses, like super rose-colored glasses, like where you're just like idealistic to the point of being unrealistic or fantasy. That can be very Piscean. And then we want to prepare for that new moon in Pisces, which is going to be taking place on Saturday on the 13th at 521 a.m. Eastern time. So even really overnight earlier than that at 2 21 a.m pacific standard time um in pisces so you want to maybe write your new moon manifestation list like on friday night or maybe even getting into saturday morning when you wake up and then you want to write all the things on your list leave the how off the list just write what you want on the list and then fold it up put it under your pillow in inside the pillowcase okay and sleep on it for two weeks then you're going to burn or destroy the list on the next full moon, which is going to be on Palm Sunday, which is um, Catholic holiday on March 28th. Okay, so that's going to be on the next full moon. So you want to really make sure a new moon is new beginnings. Full moon is endings and releasing. So now... As of Saturday, we're going to start to manifest new things. So what do you want to bring into your life, bring into the world? Love, light, happiness, romance, money. Hey, let's say money. Like since Pisces can print money, we'll just print some money. Okay, have the universe just print us some money. Um, so if you guys want to have some abundance, you know, get some Pisces going there. Um, you know, uh, uh, connection to plants, connection to your animals, all that good stuff is Pisces. Um Kelly said, do the, do the numbers on the chart always fall in the same place? Like 10 is always the, the top. Yes. Yes. The, where it's at, where the line, see how there's like the, the chart is broken up really into four quadrants. The line at the top is always the 10th. The line at the bottom is always the fourth. The line on the, on the, is always the rising sign in the first house the descendant on the opposite of the ascendant is descendant. That's the seventh house. So yes, the they they can change like a little bit. Like you know, you can see Joe Biden's chart is not exactly like perpendicular up and down, but but the line usually is around the top somewhere where it says MC, and that's your career up here. 
up here. It's a career. So Edith said something about career change. Okay. So anyway, um, if anybody has any questions for me, please feel free to post below. I love to hear. Um, we have some people on Instagram. Hi, if you're just joining. Hi on Facebook. Please post your astrological sign, like and share, like and share with your friends. And if you guys have any questions, I am going to be pulling a card for this new moon in Pisces because we got, we got, this is a lot of manifesting um, here that we're going to be doing in Pisces. Now, I want to make sure that you guys know this because this is like the shiz dizzle, okay? This is like the big, big, all right, um, inside uh, deal. The next new moon coming. And that's going to be in Aries. Um, the next new moon, not this new moon. So I'm trying to, I got all my papers are falling here. <laughs> the next new moon is going to be in Aries on the 11th. Okay, so it's going to be April 11th. New moons in Aries are the most powerful of all the new moons. Okay, because new moons are new beginnings. Aries moon are new beginnings. New moon in Aries double the new beginnings. So that's going to be the big, big, big one. We still have this Pisces one, which is very powerful, but like, I just want to give you like planning. Cause I know a lot of people plan ahead. You want to think about, okay, the next, the next, uh, that big full, uh, new moon, because that'll be very powerful in Aries. Okay. So I am going to do some questions here. Oh, Naomi. I am like messing my cards up. <laughs> huh? Yes, Kelly said Leo. She's a Leo. Edith said Gemini. Um, Kelly said she needs the 411. <laughs> uh, Naomi tagged somebody. Great. Thank you for tagging people. Okay, so this lease finally figured it out. She thinks that it's second house. So you can go back and listen. I did a whole thing explanation about the second house with Pisces. So you can go back and listen to this because I will be posting it um, on my, on my, I always po post this on my Facebook page, on my Instagram page, and then on, um, on my YouTube. Here's the thing though. I think I'm going to switch next week. Just so you know, I know I always broadcast from my face, my personal Facebook page, but I have a lot of people saying they can't, um, uh, find, they can't comment or, or whatever because it's not a business page. So I think I'm going to start doing it on my business page. I just want to let you guys know. So make sure you do subscribe to my business page and, and I'll still do it on Instagram just to let you know. You can stay here. I'm fine. But on my business page, I'll be uh, posting for my astrology updates page by Gretchen Heidel. Naomi, I want to um, pull a card for your foster son and your former foster son. There's problems. I mean, there's been problems with him. Okay. Just letting you know, um, he's had some acting out. I almost feel like, um, he's had really a hard time. Um, I can't tell if it's being like not going to school, not going to work or both. Like, I just feel like I'm missing things. A lot of things like are missing. Um, but I will say overcoming difficulties. It, that's the card that your former foster son is getting. Naomi is overcoming difficulties. Um, okay, so Archangel Jeremiah, the worst is now behind you and you're surmounting any previous challenge. I have to tell you, I do feel like he had a little bit of a wake up call. You might have even had like a run in with some kind of like teacher, law enforcement, some kind of thing where it was like, I feel like he got the. Okay, but it is saying that the worst is like starting to he's starting to move ahead in his life. So just to let you know, I, I feel like. Um, it's slow, but steady. I don't know why, but I'm getting something around maybe his age being 24 or some kind of a thing like that. Um, 20, the age of 24 to four is like be is, um, Naomi is, is for some reason. Yeah. Mars is the God of war. So I just feel like with him, he's gone through like a lot of stuff. Naomi and I just feel like he's he's been struggling I think a lot of this is hard on him so I hope that, that helps I don't you're nobody you haven't commented so I'm not sure if you're still on but I hope that helps I hope that helps I hope that helps okay so somebody <laughs> let's see Amy oh no Amy lost a ring wasn't able to put it 
I had it when I moved my first travel nurse assignment. Do you think I still have it somewhere? Uh oh, Amy lost a ring. Okay. Naomi, does that make sense? I just was curious. Um, hmm, I don't know if that ring is still with you. I'm really sorry to say that. I can usually find things, like in a creepy kind of way, I can find things pretty pretty good. Um, no, um, uh, Amy, but I'm wondering, uh, I know somebody said something about um, St. Anthony, which is, he's great. St. Anthony, the ring has been lost, must be found. Please help to bring it back around. That's the message. Thank you for whoever's posting likes. Thank you. <laughs> the Stephanie said, you need a full chart. All right, well, yeah, send me a DM or text me it would be great. Um, but I am having trouble finding this ring for you. Um, wow, it feels like it's really like been a long time and it feels like it's really gone. And I'm sorry to say that. You just see, is it around? No. Wow. That's like really like, meh. see, see what she's doing? She's like, she's like, eh. Amy. So I don't know. That ring feels like it's like, it is interesting because I keep feeling like if you're going to find it, I just keep feeling like guided to tell you that it could be in a piece of luggage but like in a side compartment side compartment and I would feel all around because it could have even have fallen through like a little hole that was in the luggage like in a compartment that's in a compartment like it went down doop, doop, like deeper than it was supposed to um so so please Amy look through that's the only hit that I'm getting is possibly luggage um but it would have been like through a thing, through a thing. It feels like it might have fallen through something. But then here's the thing. Do you even have that luggage? I, you didn't, I didn't think someone stole it because your mom. No, I, do you even have the same luggage though? I, I don't even know. I just kind of feel like it went through something that was like, it fell through a thing, fell through a thing. Like almost like, you know how like you can have a pocket in your coat and it has like a hole and then it falls into the lining of the coat. That's kind of what it feels like. It feels like it goes through. Um, yeah, you have lots of unpacked luggage. All right, I, that's the only hit I'm getting is luggage. So I would say look through something, but it also feels like it's through a thing, through a thing. So I hope that that helps. Ah, uh, Kate said, oh my God, Amy said it might be in her luggage and I told her it was in the liner of her luggage probably. <laughs> Well, you'll have to let me know. I am creepy with finding things. Um, sometimes, though, I find things like, like let's say people have asked me, like, find my camera. Well, I'll find a camera. And I'm like, wait, how many cameras do you have? And they'll be like, I have five cameras. And I'm like, crap. So I found a camera um, because I have, um, well, I might as well just say it out loud. I can remote view. Okay, so I don't know if any of you guys know what that is. But remote viewing is I can see in my mind's eye, I can see places remotely so I can remote view um, and uh, and kind of look th through areas. Now, I don't spy on people, just letting you know. I don't do that for a living. I don't like answering questions like that in private sessions, just letting you know, uh, like spying kind of things. I don't use my, I use my powers for good versus evil. We'll just say that. Um, but I can remote view. So it's a form of clairvoyance. Um, I'll just go on a, t a little side tangent here. In the military, they used to have something called this, I think it's PSI um, was the name. I don't know what the acronym stands for, but the United States military used to hire remote viewers to like spy on Russia or whoever uh, for bombing locations and missiles and finding different things. Um, I would never do something like that just because I, I don't, that's not my deal. Um, I again, I use it for this type of stuff, like finding things or locating um, missing bodies. I've done that, or missing persons um, and things, things of that nature. Um, but that is a one of my gifts, and is that I can do that. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> now everybody's gonna be asking me to find lost stuff. So I don't, I don't necessarily love doing that, but that's that is a thing I can do. Oh. He's seven, almost eight. Had a lot of trouble. There you go. 
I don't know why I keep hearing the number 24. I don't know if that's the his age or if it's like a date. I don't, I'm not quite sure what that is, Naomi, but I keep hearing 24. But I do feel like he's fallen off of like his schedule or something. Like I don't feel, oh my God, his birthday is 4, 4 2 0. So 24. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, okay. The Solis said, uh, and I'm on Instagram, uh, we have, we have dual viewing going on. Uh, she loved a pull card from my relationship. Think it might be good. It might be taking a good turn. Curious. Hmm. I'm curious too. I'll, I'll pull a card for you. What do you need to know about your relationship? Well, you are getting Mars, the god of war. Okay, so, but this can also be sexy, sexy, okay, uh, card. It means you have to try and try and try, okay? But please try in a peaceful way and not in a Mars way. Mars can be kind of aggressive and Mars can be like too much, of like, ooh, like meddling and trying and trying to figure out things. Mars uh, tends to be the god of war, ruler of Aries. Now, this can mean reconnecting in a sexual way because sometimes when we split apart from relationships um, or if we're having a, like, we'll just say a time where, you know, we're not connecting as well, uh, sometimes the sex stuff can get messed up. So this is saying you are going to have to try and, and keep going, uh, but it... It, I feel like that's good, but just watch though, because Mars can be the God of war and it really can be a lot of arguing, bickering and fighting over little things like real little things. So you just want to make sure you let things go, like take a stand, take a stand when you need to, but also walk away. Um, I did pull an angel card for you as well, the Solise, and that is chakra clearing kind of matches my shirt today, chakra clearing. And I've been talking a lot about the crown chakra. Chakra clearing means something still a little off with this relationship and maybe even within, your, within yourself or your partner. But um, I feel like if you could do some work on that, on your own energy, clearing your own chakra, uh, you can uh, do a sage, you know, saging of yourself or, or um, Palo Santo, okay? Um, but something here needs to be cleansed and cleared because it still isn't totally back on track in quite quite a good uh, way. Like it could tip back into the, the arguing and the fighting and we don't want to do that. So I'm almost at an hour here and I just want to, um, so I want to pull a card for our new moon because the new moon is, is coming in Pisces. And like I said, sometimes people might feel a little run down, a little tired this week, a little bored this week, a little like off their game. Um, Excuse me, Pisces is not really great at the grind and get it done. It's more like go meditate and just chill, you know. I mean, that's a Pi very Piscean thing to do. So, um, we are talking all about Pisces. And our, ask Archangel Anna, Sandalfin, okay, to give you signs, messages, okay. So, I'm going to pull a card. What do we all need to know? All right, for this week coming, okay, for the new moon in Pisces, what do we need to know? Daylight say another thing that's going to throw off our time is daylight savings time is this weekend as well in the United States here. So, so what do we need to know, okay, in order to have a successful week, a great new moon? Um, I am using my angel cards. What do we need to know as a collective whole? What's the most important thing about this week? Oh, here you go. Chakra clearing. It's interesting. I'll read the card because I didn't read it for the Solise. And believe me, I have 78 cards in this deck and I still got chakra clearing again. Okay, so chakra clearing. It's Archangel Metatron. And I just said Archangel Sandalfin and Archangel Metatron are BFFs. Okay. Call upon me to clear and open your chakras using sacred geometric shapes, okay? Color, shapes, um, any kind of thing like that, okay, um, is good for chakra clearing, okay? Um, clear out, clean out anything you want. It's interesting because I was even thinking about doing some saging. Um, saging on a new moon, by the way, is wonderful because you want to cleanse and clear. Even the night before the new moon that you can cleanse and clear, like Friday night, um, sage your house, sage your apartment, whatever, sage your, your tiny home, whatever it is you're living in. Um, and yes, we can sage cars and vehicles and all those sorts of things. But Archangel Sandalfin is all about, um, uh, you know, kind of 
becoming a clear channel, okay, becoming a clear messenger of God, Buddha, Allah, your spirit guides, the universe, whoever it is you pray to, but, um, and we can't be clear unless if, if, if we're all like kind of muddled, um, kind of muddled, okay, we can't be clear. So that, that's something that does not, uh, work well. So we want to clear our chakras, okay, this week. And, um, I hope that, I hope that all, uh, helps everybody. I started doing this, you know, weekly live broadcast and it's really been cool. I get a lot of feedback from, um, Instagram, from YouTube, from Facebook here. Uh, and I love your messages and your comments and all of that. I love that. So please make sure that you take really good care of your health this week and get a, a lot of good sleep. Okay. That's a, a lot of Pisces is just about sleeping and resting and restoring and kind of just taking it easy. So this week might not be the most exciting week. And Hey, that's great because a lot of times when it's an exciting week, it means some bad things sometimes are happening. So, so we want to have like that beautiful Piscean moon. Every once in a while with Pisces, you'll get an earthquake. I'll just say that Neptune can can produce earthquakes as well as well as Uranus. So sometimes we'll get an increase in Neptunian uh, earthquake activities. So that can be a thing too. And you want to make sure you go to my astrology updates page by Gretchen Heidel. I'm the only Gretchen Heidel on the internet, so if you just type type me in on the search bar, I'm the only one. So um, just make sure you spell my last name correctly. All right, everybody, please take care of yourself. Lots of love, Mwah. lots of good Piscean, New Moon, Energy, Neptune, and I will see you guys same place or same time, different place next week. Instagram, I'll still be on my regular page. You don't, you guys don't have to worry. Just my Facebook friends. We're gonna switch over to my business page. All right, everybody, take care. Lots of love. Namaste.